Well, come in, Miss Bradley. I'll make sure those negatives are in here, too. The Herald stands pretty well on the police run, Johnny, so I don't think you'll have much difficulty contacting the various departments. These cops are good guys, but they got belly aches like you and me, so name them and give them a break whenever you can. They pay cops off with peanuts the way they do newspaper men. No! I want you to get it off without breaking it. Your wife can't steal your car. That's community property. Yeah, I, I know, Chief, but she done took it out of the community. Come on, Johnny, I want you to meet the lieutenant. He's a good egg. What do you like to do? Dance? Harry James? Yes, sure. Yes, sir. Well, why don't you turn on the radio in one of your homes? Fix yourself some donuts and coffee and stuff. Hanging out in a joint like the one Carrie pulled you out of, it'll buy you nothing but trouble. Carrie, see if these two girls get home, will you? Yes, sir. Hiya, Sam. Hello, Oppenheimer. Hi. Meet Johnny Williams, the Herald's gift to the police department. This is Lieutenant Carson, Sergeant Oppenheimer. Hi, Hi young fella. It's sure nice to meet you guys. You love them when you get to know them better. Johnny's fixing to clean up the department. I thought you ought to look him over. Oh, cut it out, eh? The Herald's a good paper, Johnny. That's the best paper in town, Lieutenant. The Herald has ideals. Only the truth is fit to print. I wish I could say as much for that rag of yours, Ames. Thanks, Lieutenant. It's your first day on the police run, Johnny? Yeah. Gosh, I hope I don't pull any boners. You won't. Drop around and see me anytime you feel like it. Maybe I'll come up with a scoop one of these days just to keep Ames and the rest of those pelicans in line. Yeah, that'd be great, Lieutenant. Yeah, I sure need one. <laughs> come on, Johnny, meet the rest of the Okay, game. I'll see you later. All right, bye. That's a tough assignment for that nice kid. Oh, it won't hurt him. Won't do us any harm, either. I'll go down to the Dutchman's for an egg sandwich. I'll go along with you. Meet Johnny Williams of the Herald. This is Mr. Kim. I'm Mr. Kim. Newsborough, Sergeant. Don't get up, gentlemen. What is this, a gag? It's Walter Bard. Runs a private detective agency in the Equitable building. Well, they picked a fine spot to dump him. Looks like somebody's trying to give the department the business. Get going, Oppenheimer. Yeah. Precious sakes alive, it's Mr. Bard. Do you know anything about this? Not me, N not me. I just sell him flowers. Take this into the desk. Right. Hey, Sam. What have you got? What do you think? Hey, Sam Carson's first gonna step on the sidewalk in front of the station. That's the name of the game, Jim. Don't forget you owe me two bits. Check this gun with ballistics as soon as you can, then have the car gone over for paper. Hey, Sam, who's the... Hey, it's Walter Bart. Dumped right in front of the station. I couldn't get any closer. Boy, there's gonna be a stink about this. Yeah, it's mixed up in politics, wasn't it? He was mixed up on everything. He's been asking for something like this for a long time. What's the matter, Johnny? No, I never saw a dead man before. Give me Charlie to make a snack. No, no, no. Hold on to your wig, Charlie. Walter Bard, the private eye, was just found shot to death in his car, right at the front door of the joint. Evidently a definite slap at the prison administration. You can call it a culmination of the hoodlum war that's been going on. Yeah. Say that it's gangland's despairing reply to the vigilance of the police. Huh? Sure, play it up big, lay it on thick. Everybody's gonna be taking pot shots at the administration over this little deal, and the Express is its only friend. Oppenheimer, go up to Bard's apartment, bring back any letters or photographs that might look hot. See if you can get Bard's wife on the phone. 
Talk to the janitor and neighbors. Get a line on any recent visitors. Okay, Lieutenant. Harper, you chase up to Bard's office in the equitable building. Go through his desk and files. Check his appointment calendar. Yes. Well, Lieutenant, I just happened to think. Bard used to hang out at Tony's on 2nd Street quite a lot. Good idea. Say, Wilson, go over there and ask Tony if Bard met anyone there tonight. Then give Oppenheimer a hand if he needs to. Right. Yes? Mrs. Bard doesn't answer, Lieutenant. She's probably sleeping. Keep on trying. Okay. Johnny, this is Daniel Boone Wintergreen. He covers police for the sun. Also has the poesy corner on the side. Meet Johnny Williams of the Herald. Hi. Pleasure to meet you, my boy. I can see that you'll be a welcome contrast to the riffraff that infests this mortuary. When are you going to get rid of that moth-eaten trophy you got on? Sir, this buffalo coat belonged to my grandfather, Daniel Boone Wintergreen, noted Indian fighter. Nothing would persuade me to part with it, except a temporary shortage of funds. Are you in need of a good overcoat, Mr. Williams? Hey, lay off him, Wintergreen. On a hot day, that coat gets higher than the stockyards in the south wind. Come in, Doc. Well, here it is, Sam. The bullet went clean through him, smashed the fifth rib. Have you boys found it yet? In the front seat of Hall Street. Discharged from the gun that was in the car? Mm-hmm. His own. There were plenty of powder burns, Sam. Could have been suicide. Not a chance, Doc. The boys at the desk would have heard the shot. The body was driven there in Bart's car and left there. Oh, I'm sure you're right, Sam. Do you think someone's trying to discredit us in the administration? Could be. Holy mackerel. That girl couldn't be mixed up in this case. Well, this is very interesting. The daughter of Luther Bradley, the reformed candidate for mayor. Boy, what the Express will do with this. Send Brewer in. Must be some other Bradley. Somehow, I don't think it is. Why? The famous Calvert Luck, my boy. Brewer, you and Robbins go out to the Luther Bradley house on Carlisle. Ask for Miss Janet Bradley. Tell her you'd appreciate it if she'd come back with you. We want to ask her a few questions. Okay. Handle her carefully. All we want is her cooperation. Stress that, Brewer. Yes? Mrs. Barr still doesn't answer. Keep trying. Express? I want to speak to Mr. Calvert. Very important. It's Dr. Yeager talking. Hello? Yeah, this is Calvert. Oh, hello, Doc. What's on your mind? Walter Bard. Sure I know him. Well, who shot him? I don't know. But his body was found in his own car right in front of the police station here. That's right. The police station. And get this, Mr. Calvert. There was a notation in Bard's memorandum book that he had an appointment with Janet Bradley this evening. Luther Bradley's daughter? Are you sure? Oh, 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 this is beautiful. Look, Doc, you stay there and keep your eyes open. I'll keep in touch with you. Oh, I'll be right here, Mr. Calvert. You can count on me. Goodbye. This is Miss Bradley, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Carson. How do you do? Sorry we had to bring you out this hour of the night, Miss Bradley. Sit down, please. What do you know about a man named Walter Bard? You knew him? Knew him? He was murdered this evening. Oh. In his own car, shot. I found him about 11.45 in front of this police station. You did know him. Yes, I, I knew him. Seen him recently? This evening. I had an appointment with him at his apartment. Were you a friend of his, Miss Bradley? No. Suppose you tell me why you went to see him. I'm sorry, I can't. Private? That's not so good. Is your father still in Washington? Yes, he'll be back on Monday in time for the election. This murder could prove very embarrassing for your father, Miss Bradley. The dead body on your doorstep could prove very embarrassing for the department, too, Lieutenant Carson. Maybe. Do you mind very much if we take your fingerprints? Is that necessary? Well, it's a routine we follow, but of course, if you'd rather not. 
Very well. Thank you. This way, please. Now the right hand. That's fine. You can wipe off your hands with this. Oh, thank you. My uh, photograph next, Lieutenant? Sitting's by appointment only. That's all there is to it. Be classified up, huh? It will take a few minutes to make comparisons. You don't mind waiting. Of course not. Right in there. You're being swell about this. Yes? Max Covert to see you, Lieutenant. Send him in. Thanks, Sam. I just thought I'd drop in and say hello. I figured you'd be around. Well, I don't wonder you're sore, Sam. Someone giving the police department the business, huh? The administration, too. The administration's your problem. Ah, oh, now that's not the attitude to take, Sam. Don't forget, we got an election coming up next Tuesday. Well, I'm a policeman, not a politician. I know, but a politician sometimes could do an awful lot for a policeman, Sam. I understand you got the Bradley girl down here. So you know all about that, huh? Well, people usually cooperate with me, Sam. She was with Bard this evening, wasn't she? I'm not making any statements, and when I do, the Express will get it, along with the other papers. Well, you're not letting a pretty face affect your better judgment, are you, Sam? I'm not letting that tabloid of yours spare that girl's reputation so you can stop Luther Bradley on Tuesday. Well, the public has the right to know the facts, Express Princeton. Yeah, anything for a nickel. <laughs> Look, Sam, how long have you had this job? Long enough. When you first came into this department, I was still on the police run for the Express. Now, I own it. While we're looking around, look at Mike Shea there. Now, Mike was your type of copier. He never played ball. So where did it get him? A load of lead in the belly. Ah, you ought to be smart, Sam. Look, is Bradley anything to you? No. Well, Jordan's on his way out. How'd you like to be chief? I'd like it. You know that, Calvert. Could be arranged. How? Well, if this Bradley girl were booked, it might please some very important people very much. And they might be willing to do a lot for you. There isn't a particle of evidence against her. Well, no one would criticize you if you'd book her anyway. Not suspicion or material witness, anything you like. Until after the election. Then let her go. <laughs> She'd be all right. Do that, and you'll have a grand jury investigation right in your lap. Oh, Sam, now, don't look at it that way. Why, a week after the election, the whole thing will be completely forgotten. Think it over. Don't forget, Sam, it always pays to cooperate. Always pays. Great guy, wasn't he, Lieutenant? He sure was. I guess he was just about the greatest cop the city ever had. Yeah, wanted to get him. Lieutenant, I got something to show you. See you, William. What'd you find in Bard's apartment? Cigarette butts in the ashtray with two different shades of lipstick. Two glasses with prints on both. Prints on the gun, on one of the glasses, and Miss Bradley's fingerprints, all check. Looks like an open and shut case, Lieutenant. Bring Miss Bradley in, Sergeant. Well, Lieutenant would like to see you, Miss Bradley. All right, Oppenheimer. Miss Bradley, we found your fingerprints on a highball glass in Bard's apartment. Oh, yes, he, he poured a drink for me, but I set it down without tasting it. We also found your fingerprints on the gun with which Bard was shot. All right. I'll tell you exactly what did happen. I went to see Bard on behalf of someone who was very close to me. 
Someone whom he was trying to blackmail. He made a business of buying and selling information about people, especially about those who had built honest lives after making a bad start. Prominent people. He had come to me with certain information. He wanted $20,000 for it, but I'd been able to raise only 10. Come in, Miss Bradley. Won't you sit down? I'll fix you a drink. Oh, oh I really don't care for one, thank you. I have some very nice bourbon here. I simply haven't been able to raise that much money, Mr. Bard. How much have you raised? Ten thousand. And I said twenty. Well, that settles that. Oh, please, won't you give me a little more time? Look, I... Miss Bradley, you're stalling. You either haven't got the money or you won't go to the one who has got it. Now, I'm holding a powerhouse. Newspaper clippings, letters, affidavits, photographs. Enough dynamite to blow the lid a mile high. And I've got a cash customer who'll pay twenty thousand in the morning. I suppose it'd be useless to appeal to your sense of decency. Oh, completely. You see, I haven't any. Not since I put on long pants. And I've been called all the names, Miss Bradley. I can believe that. But I do know when a girl needs a drink. Take it. You look shaky. Now, give me that envelope. You'll find them all there. Don't worry. I'd rather enjoy putting an end to your activities. Stay where you are. He was very much alive when I left him, Lieutenant. Miss Bradley, do you expect me to believe that chisel lets you take those papers away from him? But I, I've told you the exact truth. What happened to the gun? I threw it in his car when I left. What'd you do with the envelope? Burned it as soon as I got home. What was in it? I, I can't possibly tell you. It must have been hot if Bard wanted that kind of dough for it. Holding back now won't do you a bit of good. What was it about, your father? It's no use asking me. What was in it? Dirt Bard had dug up? Something Calvert could use? Let me help you. You couldn't make a deal with him. He said he'd take you home. It was raining. You go down to his car. He makes a pass at you. You grabbed his gun, let him have it, and scram with the envelope. The brakes in the car come loose, and the car starts rolling. Lieutenant, you... You sound as if you want to believe I killed Walter Bard. Your prints are on the gun. You have motive, plenty of it. What do you expect me to believe? I guess it does look pretty bad. What are you going to do with me? I ought to book you. You know what that will do to my father on Tuesday. I realize the pressure you're under, Lieutenant. I've learned a great deal about the police department from Father. Max Calvert could do a lot to help you if you could learn to do things his way. Leave Calvert out of this. I'm a policeman, not a politician. I'm glad. I've always liked policemen. I should book you. Otherwise, I can't hold you. If you don't mind waiting a little longer, well, something may turn up. You mean you may see things a little more clearly? Put it anywhere you like. In here, please. You guys mind if I want a hand? Nope. Oh, I'll leave this character over his friends. Hello, Doc. Anything new on the bard killing? Well, he was shot with his own gun that was found in the car. Now, well, we know all about that. Yeah, but what you don't know is that Janet Bradley, Luther's daughter, is mixed up in the case. No. Are you kidding? That's right. Carson has her downstairs now. She had a date with Bard in his apartment this evening. Regular little mine of information, aren't you, Doc? Well, I, I just thought the boys should know. 
That's nice of you. But I'm still running the night shift around here, and I'll give out the information. The Express already has it. I don't need to tell you how they got it. So you boys might as well have it, too. Miss Bradley is involved. To what extent, we don't know yet. She was in Bard's apartment this evening, but she gives a perfectly logical reason for being there. Well, that's good enough for the front page. I'd go slow on any insinuations if I were you fellas. Did you get that, Charlie? Right. That was costume, sir. Hello, give me Mr. Yeah. Jones. Here's the latest dope on the Bard case. Miss Janet Bradley, junior league, active in everything. Oh, yes, Mr. Jones, I'm sticking right on the job. I just wormed it out of the lieutenant this minute. Janet Bradley, daughter of the mayoralty candidate, is being questioned with regard to the Bard murder. Yes. And you'll leave those two tickets for the Philharmonic. You boys won't forget who gave you the original tip. We won't forget. Dr. G.F. Yeager. Now, which one of you has taken my scissors? I stuck them in your buffalo coat for safekeeping. If you moochers insist on playing childish pranks with my scissors, I'll be forced to do something drastic. Well, it's about time. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Calvert. I didn't know you were here. I hope you haven't been waiting long. Long enough. Where have you been? Oh, all over. It, it's been a very busy night. Has Carson booked the Bradley girl yet? Not yet. He's stalling, Mr. Calvert. I don't trust Carson. He's never played along with us the way he should. Why, he just bawled me out for tipping off the press room that he'd been questioning the girl. I want her charged with murder, and I want it spread all over the front page of every paper in town. Sooner the better. Oh, thank you. I'll save this for later. I'm going to give this murder the biggest coverage any local paper's had in years. I'll run the Bradley girl's picture every day. Diagrams of the street where the body was found. Diagrams of Bard's apartment. Pictures of the murder car. I'll have a sob sister covering her appearance at the inquest. Every appearance in court. I'll do a half column devoted to her costume alone. How she looks. With the inference that she's frightened, that she's hiding something, that her back's against the wall. Yes, but the only hitch, Mr. Calvert, is that Walter Bard didn't die of a gunshot wound. What did you say? He was poisoned before he was shot. Who did it? I don't know. You cut him open? I didn't have to. I found traces of poison in his mouth. Well, have you told Carson? Not yet. Well, don't. The trouble is, if Carson ever takes a good look at the body, he'll notice that there was practically no bleeding. And he'll know what that means. Then we've got to get rid of the body. Get it out of here, fast, tonight. Before the inquest, I can't. You can, and you're going to. But, Mr. Calvert, you can't just pick up a body and drag it out of the morgue before the chief medical examiner has had a whack at it. Look, have you got any John Doe's in the icebox? One that you can ship out to the crematorium in a hurry? Well, there, there's a floater that we fished out of the bay a couple of weeks ago. All right, now, you go down to the morgue and switch Walter Bard's body to the John Doe slab. Then make out commitment papers for John Doe. Cremation and ship it out tonight. But it's sure to be found out sooner or later. If you have to, make the morgue attendant the fall guy. V. Squawks, you send him to me, you understand? I'll, I'll do my best, Mr. Calvert. Your best is to get that body out of here fast. Yes? This is Bart on the wire now, Lieutenant. Hello? Is this Mrs. Walter Bard? Yes, this is Mrs. Bard. You've been ringing for some time, haven't you? I'm sorry. I was sound asleep. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. But that isn't possible. He wasn't a... I'm afraid he was, Mrs. Bard. Uh, we don't know yet. I'll have to ask you to come down here. I know it'll be difficult, but you may be able to help us. Of course, but... But I haven't seen Walter for several weeks. We haven't been living together. Yes. As soon as I've dressed. Yes? Arthur, something dreadful has happened. It's Walter. Did the police say how it happened, Nora? Or where? No, Arthur. No. They've asked me to come down to the station. No. Remember, you haven't been out all evening. I'll go with you. Certainly, I'm your lawyer. 
Don't worry, darling. Everything will be all right. Yes. Pick me up on your way down to the station. In about 20 minutes. It won't take me long to dress. Oh, here's the lab report on the lipstick on the cigarette stubs. Any calls? No, sir. One of them is Janet Bradley's. The other's a shade called Rochelle, used mostly by brunettes. Mrs. Barter's here, Lieutenant. Oh, send her in. Will you come in, please? Sorry you had to come down here tonight, Mrs. Bard. I understand, Lieutenant. This is Mr. Templeton, my attorney. Walter Bard and I would have been divorced. I'm handling all of Mrs. Bard's business affairs. So I asked Mr. Templeton to come with me. Sit down, please. You told Mrs. Bard very little on the telephone, Lieutenant. Well, Bard was shot through the heart. We found his car parked in front of this building, his body in it. But that's fantastic. Well, who did it? Well, we're not prepared to say as yet. Now, Mrs. Bard, I think you told me that you and Bard hadn't lived together for quite some time. Not for over a year. Uh, have you seen him recently? I saw him at a nightclub one evening several weeks ago. I was with Mr. Templeton. We want to be frank with you, Lieutenant. Well, I hope you will be. Nora and I are going to be married. We've been waiting for her divorce from Bard. Had the proceedings begun? No. The papers were ready, but they hadn't been served yet. Did Bard refuse to accept service on these papers? Repeatedly. He was my husband, and even though he's dead, Nora. I'm going to say it, Arthur. He was mean and cruel. He liked to hurt people. He did it deliberately. I studied for two years. Mrs. Bard has had a very difficult time, Lieutenant. Yes, I know. Mrs. Bard, uh, you were home all evening? Yes. I was asleep when you telephoned. You weren't in Bard's apartment at any time during the course of the evening. Mrs. Bard has already answered that question twice before, Carson. I don't mind answering Lieutenant Carson's question a third time, Arthur. I was not in Walter's apartment this evening, Lieutenant. Were you? No. Thank you. I suppose you know I'll have to ask Mrs. Bard to identify the remains. Naturally. Uh, Oppenheim, will you take care of that? Yeah, sure. This way, please. Listen, pal. I didn't bust that mirror. Somebody else tossed the bottle into the glassware. Name? I'm Zachary, the Philadelphia Phantom. Never heard of you. What's your address? You can't book me, copper. I'm fighting at the Elks tonight. The annual smoker, see? I go on at one o'clock. What's your address? But what about the Elks? You ain't going to let the Elks down, are you? I'm an odd fellow. The address, Zachary. You can't do it to me, pal. It's my professional reputation. This is at the Benjamin Hotel, Lieutenant. Give the Phantom one of our private suites. He'll see the judge in the morning. But I got to go on at 1 a.m. I'll come back. Honest, I will. Take him away. But... I vote for Louis. He has the best beer. What's the best dish in the joint? The blonde, the blonde behind, behind the counter. counter. 